Hello and welcome to Business Edition. In this program, among the issues we're focusing on are the developments of the dry port sector in the country. In the Entrepreneur Today, we meet Patrick Ngoi, who is the founder and CEO of Helvetic Group, who are in the renewable energy business. My name is Yvonne Msemembo saying welcome to Business Edition. I have with me the chairman of the Container Freight Station, Inland Container, Depot and Dry Port Association, Mr. Ashraf Khan. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Dry ports, inland container depots in the country were started out of necessity. The situation at the Dar es Salaam uh, port, the congestion situation was drastic. So these were created to uh, address that problem. Over the years, what is your assessment? Do you think that uh, inland container depots and dry ports have been able to address the situation or do you think it hasn't really been addressed? The main purpose, the main purpose was to provide supporting services to the port of Dar es Salaam because the port of Dar es Salaam was overwhelmed by cargo and the containers uh, dwell time had increased and there's a lot of con congestion. The ICDs and the CFS, the container freight stations, actually are providing some a sort of a breathing service, you know, giving the port of Dar es Salaam a breather, that uh, whenever there is congestion, the goods should go to, out of the port, and the port should only be dealing with loading the ships and unloading the vessels. So we have uh, greatly contributed to this uh, uh, problem of congestion in the port of Dar es Salaam, and uh, especially now that the port of Dar es Salaam is undergoing expansion uh, program and uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, construction activities and, uh, and, and other heavy duty equipment movement within the port area. So the, the purpose, the main purpose now for the use of these ICDs and the CFS is to make sure that any container that lands in the port of Dar es Salaam should be moved out immediately to the ICDs and allow the port of Dar es Salaam undergo the expansion process. So we are actually looking forward that uh, the 24-7 operations be fully implemented and that the authorities sit down with the stakeholders and come to an agreement that we have to make full use of these ICTs. And once the port of Dar es Salaam is extended and expanded so that we have both 13 and 14, then the capacity of the port of Dar es Salaam will exceed 2 million, will exceed 2 million TUs per annum. Now, this is very critical because today the capacity of the port of Dar es Salaam is lower. Now, that's why we need the ICTs. But then, if we have the extensions done in the port of Dar es Salaam, the capacity of the port of Dar es Salaam will increase. And once it increases, the congestion in the port will be lower. And if the con congestion is lower, then then, then life will be better. Um, what has contributed to uh, your being at the end of performance? What, is the, what has contributed to that though? What, what has contributed to that is, 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 is a common goal between the stakeholders and the government and the ICD and CFS operators. See, um, when you want to have these auxiliary services, you need to have an understanding between the stakeholders and the uh, authorities. Um, there has been a very good cooperation between the authorities in terms of uh, uh, Tanzania Revenue Authority, Sumatra, Tanzania Port Authority and the stakeholders so far in the Ministry of Transport. So far the cooperation is very good but if we want to make more progress then we need to go deeper and then we need to go very deeper. For instance when we talk about implementing the 24-7 operations in the Port of Dar es Salaam, this is very critical because this, is, this will bring about more efficiency in the port of Dar es Salaam, and, and, and that is a winner. You say you need to have, uh, you need to come together, the stakeholders, to be able to uh, address your differences and challenges you're facing. And when we're looking at this, what um, the legal framework, is that the problem? Lack of a, a, a recognizable legal framework for you to be able to work in, is that something that you're facing right now? One of the predicaments that we have is the lack of a, a proper legal framework that recognizes by law, the existence of the ICDs and the CFS. So you see, when you are shipping your goods internationally, you have a contract with your bill of lading. Now the bill of lading 
defines the final destination point. Today in Tanzania we have ICDs, but they are not recognized internationally in the shipping industry. So that there should be a, a, a binding legal contract between the shipping lines and the ICDs, so that the ICDs can be fully described in the bill of lading as a final destination. So today we are operating under a local arrangement in terms of a standard operating procedure that has been agreed by all uh, stakeholders, including the shipping agencies and the stakeholders and the authorities. So we are working on that framework, which needs to be widened so that we get the international recognition and that things would be better in terms of uh, choice. The competition. The competition is what we are looking for because competition brings down the price. So if there is a, a direct delivery to the ICD in terms of through bill of lading, then definitely the price also in freight might tends to fluctuate. The kind of services that ICDs can offer um, in the country, are people really aware of the services? There is lack of awareness. Very much there is lack of awareness. You see, the ICDs here are providing the much needed component of efficiency. Now, efficiency normally comes with the cost. And uh, the perception that ICDs are charging storage, you see, um, indiscriminately, you see, or purposely. Now, th th this is a perception because ICDs are providing an area for storage. So, basically, that is the principal business of ICDs. Now, if that is the principal business of ICDs to provide storage, and that's what we are selling. Now, when, uh, when, when, when you have an ICD today, like you have an ICD today, we are transporting the containers from the port to the ICDs without being paid. We are handling and keeping the containers and ICDs for seven days from the date it is discharged without any cost of recovery. So our cost is getting higher. Now, this is absorbable if the dwell time is higher. But now, with the efficiency coming around the corner, we, because the TRA have introduced a very good system, TANSIS, it is picking up. So the ICDs need to have an economical tariff which will be able to accommodate and sustain our business in the long run. Otherwise, we, are, uh, we, 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 are, we don't have a future. So the government is working on it, and we are very hopeful that the review of the tariff would be made in such a manner that the port of Dar es Salaam, the port of Dar the marine terminals, should not be attractive to people or importers and for keeping their cargo. Rather, the cargo should be going to the ICDs for storage purposes. This would meet the criteria of a preference of ICDs than the marine terminals. What about the issue of security? How is this being addressed? Uh, the ICDs have got a binding contract with the shipping lines, with the Tanzania Revenue Authority, with the owners of the cargo, that from the time the cargo or the container is taken uh, from the hands of the terminal in the port, the liability is handed over to the ICD until the time the container is picked up by the owner from the ICD. So this is very well defined in the standard operating procedure that we are observing today. What is the way forward right now? What is being done to make sure that these challenges, especially the issue of uh, lack of a legal framework, is, is being addressed? What is being done right now to make sure that you are operating in a more conducive environment? We have actually uh, presented our case to the authorities and we are looking forward for the authorities to uh, sort out this issue and uh, come up with uh, something uh, very constructive to keep this industry up and running for the future. That is what we expect mm -hmm. because right this now... Is, this is something that you've been doing for some time now yes, and we are. the yes, response we are. has not been as, 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 far, as fast as you know, we'd expect it. And Considering that, you know, ICDs have a major contribution to the improvement of services at the ports of, uh, like the Dar es Salaam port. Well, rightly said, you know, because uh, without the ICDs today, um, the port of Dar es Salaam would become a very slow port in terms of dwell time, and uh, that would increase the cost of uh, uh, transiting goods from the port of Dar es Salaam or importing goods from the port of Dar es Salaam. So the ICDs are very important today, 
and, uh, and, and we, we, we are positively, actually, we are working with the government and with the authorities to make sure that uh, this legal framework is established as soon as possible and that all um, impediments and predicaments that we have today are addressed and uh, so that business can be uh, normal and fast and efficient. Welcome back to Business Edition and now in the Entrepreneur Today I have with me someone who is very well known here in the country. His name is Patrick Ngoi and he's the CEO of Helvetic Group Renewable Energy. Welcome to the program. This is not the first time that you've taken part in this program but it's nice to have you back again and I'm sure this time you've got lots more to tell since we last met you. Let's start off with getting this um, award of the East Africa uh, the Young Business Leader award. How do you feel about this? The work that you've been doing in renewable energy in the country, uh, how do you translate this in your work and the, um, the impact that you want to make sure that you have in Tanzania, in the area of renewable energy? It's, it's a great honor that um, Tanzania can have its actual representation in Africa and, they, and, and in East Africa being called the young business leader, um, I think it's amazing. There are a lot of young people in Kenya, uh, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi who are competing for the award. Being, being able to, to get it and bring it home to Tanzania is, is an amazing um, experience, it's humbling. But most importantly, I think it's, it's what we do that I think is, is, is great that it's getting recognized. We've had a very good impact in, in the rural areas that we cover in order to install um, solar systems and you know, you talk of wind systems. So this is actually a recognition that is just humbling and, and we just hope that we can continue representing the Tanzanian youth and be able to inspire others to also follow their dreams. Before we talk about what you've been doing in the uh, rural parts of, uh, of Tanzania in, uh, you know, when we talk about renewable energy um, services, Let's talk about um, a recent um, meeting that you attended in Washington, um, the IMF and World Bank uh, annual youth dialogue, um, and you attended that and you represented the African continent. How did you feel about that, you know, you've been chosen to go and represent this continent? It's, it's, a, it's a, an amazing opportunity because being selected um, to represent African youth and the youth dialogue panel at this prestigious um, uh, institution like the IMF and World Bank combined together, it's an amazing opportunity. But even more amazing is at least our work that we're doing in the rural, rural parts of, of the country um, is getting recognized because I think for us we are able to cause so much social and economical changes in every place that we're able to install, um, say, solar system, wind systems. So just getting that recognition, having the opportunity to speak out as part of the youth uh, doing business, and uh, it's an amazing experience, and we hope it goes a long way. What is it that you wanted to share at this, uh, at this meeting that you think, uh, in terms of challenges that you'd like to be addressed, and in terms of opportunities that you think there are, what was it that you shared uh, during this dialogue? It was an amazing opportunity for, for hearing youth here because we had got each continent being represented by a different youth and I got to talk on what I see as a, a youth doing business in Africa. Um, I think what's also important I learned from that is the challenges that come with it um, and, and what is being done. Um, like in other parts of the globe, a lot of youth out there are having challenges when doing business and in, in Africa it's, it's not different. But now what is the responsibility of ha having governments creating an, in an enabling environment uh, to, able to facilitate so that the youth can be inclusive? I had a lot of people um, share their opinions on that aspect in terms of inclusive growth mm -hmm. so that we see how we can translate everything. But as a person that's already doing something on the ground, it was an amazing opportunity for me also to say what I think are my thoughts. Um, I'd, there's a lot more work that needs to be done um, and the challenges remain but we have to also rise above those challenges, um, be able to believe in what it is that we want to do, have the patience to follow it through and not giving up 
I, I think also what's important as well is the IMF and World Bank is giving youth who are doing something an opportunity to express themselves at, at that level, at that type of body, that also goes a long way. Um, I had a lot and I learned a lot as okay. well. Okay, so what's in particular that you learned that you brought back with you and you'd like to see translated within um, the, the, the business environment in, in the country so that the youth, many of them who want to become self-employed, are able to get into, um, into, into, or into employment opportunities or jobs and businesses that you think, you know, they're vibrant and they can develop and bring up changes in the country. First thing I th uh, that I took back home from what I see the IMF and World Bank are talking about is first of all, form foremost, the, the first step has to be taken by every youth. Once you take that step and you are met with challenges, you look for different individuals maybe undergoing the same challenges. And also as well to be able to speak up as a whole, so as to be able to deal with those challenges together. I think that more and more youth are doing a lot of entrepreneurship out there, I being one of them. They need to be more and more platforms that the youth can be able to interact and address these challenges collectively. Because once we collectively address these challenges, then we can be able to conquer it and change the way the mindset is towards these challenges. One cannot do it on their own. Um, I, as an entrepreneur, are met with different challenges, but just getting the opportunity and a platform to express those challenges allows me to now to start dealing with them. I bring that back, and I, 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 that's something I would like to share with my youth as well, how they can address those challenges when they met in terms of uniting and talking about those challenges so that changes can be made. And when, if you assess the current um, environment that you're operating since you started and over the years, two, three years that you've been in this business, um, how do you assess it? Is it an environment that you think, you know, young people like you can, uh, can, can grow? It's a challenging Or do you still think that there's, there are things that need to be addressed to be able for you to be able to grow? It's a challenging environment. It's it quite is. a challenging environment. It's an environment that one has to really look up and see how it is that we will tackle mm -hmm. this challenge. Mm -hmm. It's not an impossible environment, but it's a challenging environment. Okay. There are lots of challenges. Okay, and what two are the main challenges that you'd like to be addressed? The, the first challenge that has to be addressed is the change in the mindset of a youth. Mm -hmm. First thing, because once you change the mindset, it allows you to now embark on your dream, embark on what you believe in. So, and the only way to change that mindset is to believe. And after you do that, then the rest follows. Then how you can be able to find um, solutions within that, within those challenges that you meet. That's another thing altogether. Let's go back to your business. You said that the numbers have been growing over the years. Um, where has be, have you seen significant growth? I see significant growth in the rural market. Urban, urban demand is, 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 is one thing, but what's, what we are seeing as well is the rural demand is, is, is quite substantial. So we, we see good opportunities to expand in rural parts of East Africa, trying to see how we can get from where we are to the end user. That's all is a way in which you can bridge business. Now how we follow those end users, there are different ways of going about it. That's a trade secret, right? But at the end of the day, I think there are more opportunities in rural areas and people should not disregard um, what the, the opportunities that can be found in the, within that, that, that area. What is your current focus right now in terms of the business that you're operating in? Um, to make sure that it becomes more affordable for Tanzanians. What would you like to do and how do you want to, put, to go about doing that? We have to expand um, what it is that we do at all costs. Um, we have to find ways in which we can reach more end users. So for us that's an ongoing challenge and at no point can we be complacent that we have achieved uh, something unless we are able to have an actual impact mm -hmm and a continuous impact. So having a sustainable business model, finding ways to get to the end user, that's what we, we, we make sure we follow up on.
since 2000. Well, that's it from Business Edition. Until next week, same time, my name is Yvonne Mtumembo saying goodbye.